we're we're broadcasting from my kitchen to your studio under the stairs. Exactly. Um, it's quite a nice day out in Birmingham. Um, I haven't been outside yet, but I'm looking forward to taking the dog for a walk um, later. It's uh, been a busy day so far. You've been out and about. You had yes, your Turkish uh, coffee. Yeah, I had a Turkish coffee in Damastina. So this is like a, the spot, uh, like a bit of the advert space in the in the in the interview. I hope it doesn't get cut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I also went just uh, to to buy some bread, uh, some sourdough uh, loaves in the in medicine. Oh, the advert. Uh, <laughs> so we <just> to <laughs> To spend the week the with sponsorship deal. <laughs> well, who knows? <laughs> Depending how I'd it goes. Nice. Yes, I'd be happy with the sourdough bread sponsorship deal. And um, um, what are you working on today? Are you are you in any particular work stream? Well, uh, I just had a, a little meeting uh, with uh, some people from the School of Art uh, talking about the the Protest Choir to see how are we going to be running it uh, this year. Probably mm -hmm. we're going to have to start the uh, online uh, sessions because uh, we're based at the conservatoire and then also Margaret Street is uh, having some issues with space, so it's quite tricky mm -hmm. in that. It's uh, challenging just uh, because of the lag, which sometimes, uh, if you embrace it, it, it can create really, really nice uh, performances. I, I, I agree, and I'm sure you've must, you must have had some very unusual and challenging, as you say, and some, some kind of quite... Um, Oh, is there another word for it? Just, just quite uh, different ways of of thinking about how you deliver performances. Mm. Um, obviously, there's been a huge jump to streaming, and and mm. for many people that was a bit of a, a default position anyway. Um, I mean, I, I really miss live music. There's there's no other way of of saying it, and I have friends and, and colleagues that are live music promoters or artists and they are putting on different types of performances they are trying different different programming styles i do know that there are a lot of other people who are really reluctant to take that risk um there's that phrase isn't there Ab absence makes the heart go grow fonder hmm. yeah or absence some belief um oh yeah definitely uh, yeah. And, and, you know, I really hope that when we can move back to some level of normality or, or a new a new normal, whatever, whatever that is, that everybody embraces music like yeah, they no. did before. Yeah, I really hope so. I think uh, there could be like, a, as you say, as a green fund on like that missing element, the performances and concerts, they are just going to blossom. Naturally, mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a need for that. Uh, I mean, like this morning, just uh, uh, going uh, to the to the bakery, it's just uh, I just had the necessity of just getting out of home. They really need them as water for in the yeah day to day. So, have you found yourself listening to music a lot more? Say, if you're going just to go out, out and pick up some bread, or you're you know you're going to have a coffee or something like that. Do you find yourself? Um, listening more to music on the walk or, or in moments where you may not have done before? Actually, I grew up on, uh, on, uh, on podcasts. Uh, I wasn't uh, like uh, really listening to many podcasts, but uh, now I, I really find it uh, quite interesting. And especially hearing other people just uh, that are specialists on something, just uh, speaking about their, mm -hmm. their practice, I think it's quite, uh, yeah, it's great. I find it uh, quite inspiring. Um, another advert. Any any ones that you recommend? Well, uh, there's the this Spanish one that they call the uh, Aquí hay dragones, which is like a, oh here are dragons, which is actually the uh, like like the reason for the for the name is uh, quite uh, quite nice because they uh, they refer to the old maps in which uh, all the places that weren't explored they had uh, this Latin. Uh, like writing about oh here there's uh, there are dragons so yeah, be careful. I think the English the English um, translation is here be dragons yeah um, and I can think of lots of places that I could describe probably Downing Street at the moment would be um, yes. uh, anyway we won't go political on on that so particular podcast there are four uh, people in there so there's uh, this uh, filmmaker called uh, Rodrigo Cortez. Uh, who uh, was quite uh, recognized by this movie called uh, Buried, 
uh, which okay. was basically like 90 minutes of uh, one guy just literally buried and just uh, uh, which uh, actually got a really, really, really good uh, like uh, awards and uh, yeah, it was uh, quite recognized. And uh, he also did uh, recently a series called uh, Blackwood, I think. Is it a series or a movie? Okay. So yeah, he, he works quite a lot uh, with, uh, in Holly, I think in Hollywood or with uh, British actors. Well, I'm, not, I'm not really sure now. I should know if I'm speaking about it now. <laughs> well, it's a good, it's yeah. a good recommendation. There's two recommendations in there. There's the podcast and his films. So it's two for the price of one. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, you can listen to the podcast be thinking of uh, watching that movie. Yeah. But, uh, they don't really speak about their the work. They actually speak about uh, like the work of other people. So, uh, and it's quite nice because uh, uh, this filmmaker in uh, the section in the podcast, he talks uh, mainly about music. So it's uh, quite okay. refreshing. And sometimes he, he also talks about uh, like uh, editing uh, techniques, uh, uh, like uh, filmmakers that they have uh, uh, like a, a very special uh, vision or sometimes he also talks about uh, like a really uh, like things that has happened in Hollywood like uh, I remember uh, he was talking about this movie called The uh, Roar which it was yeah. basically a uh, <laughs> it's just it's it cannot be really described what's the movie about it's like basically just putting some actors just to, to fight with a uh, with like wild lions in a in a some sort of reservoir and just edit it in a in a sort of way that it makes sense obviously <laughs> yeah uh, i think it was like the most dangerous uh, uh filming ever in the in the history of cinema no way. So, sounds, yeah. very, sounds very calm viewing would you ever consider producing your own podcast actually uh we did a uh, two or three episodes with uh, Infinite Opera with also just a uh, more advert placement. I'm just wearing like a, <laughs> you know, like a, <laughs> 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 That's a big group. Yes, no, exactly. So we actually had uh, two podcasts. Uh, we were like a, that was when we were in an artistic residence uh, in uh, Minerva Works. So yes, uh, we did uh, several uh, recordings. They were quite funny. Uh, because we were just, uh, in the first two, we wanted just uh, to talk about opera in a different way, but I guess uh, that's every podcast about opera is about, oh yeah, we're going uh, we're gonna to talk about opera in a different way. So basically, yeah. we're just, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love how you've um, you've accessorized your headphones mm -hmm. with your t-shirt. It's roughly the yeah, same color. Cool. Yeah, I didn't even realize that actually they're really much. It's actually uh, the same. Like I've, I've underprepared for this, for this interview. All you can yeah, see is my... My tagine that matches the same color. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I was just trying two or three different shirts before the interview to see, oh, which one is to work better? Like this one, maybe brown, maybe this one, like a blue with little palm trees in white. So, oh, maybe that's a bit too summery. <laughs> You've got a very good sense of humor, Danny. And I, and I think, you know, it's very important to retain, um, I suppose being being a composer, being a a musician, and working in the projects that you do um, can can be quite serious and, and require a lot of focus mm. um, at times. And then, particularly with what we've all been through in the last nine months, it's important to have it's important to see the um, you know to have some brevity and lightness yeah. in life. Do you, do you what do you kind of write with with humor in mind in any of your in any of your work i think humor uh, can be really used to put in the focus the the problems and the laughing about them means also having certain understanding of uh, what's going on i think humor is it's like a, in this series of uh, learning it's just a uh, say uh, you are able to analyze, summarize and then create create something new like uh, some new thoughts about something is uh, like a uh, once uh, you really understand something. So I guess reaching to certain topics uh, through humor means that uh, you are interested in them and uh, you can really focus mm. about them. And then you can really create uh, really serious things uh, with or without humor in mind. But uh, maybe talking about them with humor is like means that uh, you actually got to the point. We're right now working on this uh, sort of a hoodening play uh, Houdening, uh, they're like uh, these masquerades that were happening in Kent and they were having uh, this horse uh, like a costume as a central character. 
And uh, we're updating them uh, with uh, some complaints uh, from some unions of workers about um, all the laboral conditions now during uh, COVID and how uh, this really is some sort of uh, modern slavery. So, yeah. and actually the workshops there, like uh, we just really have a really good time. Yeah, uh, even though the subject matter is very serious and very mm. uh, deep and, and far reaching. Yeah. Mm. But actually, humor is like really related to creativity. So I think mm. through humor and through just imagine how you can exaggerate things just to make them really clear and to communicate that topic. Uh, then, then once you just create all that material, then you can reduce and say, okay, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna make this uh, like a something that can be delivered uh, very uh, clearly. So, mm. for example, uh, in this uh, hoodening. Uh, Musically, I was thinking of uh, stealing some of the cheesy minimalist music that uh, some of these corporate videos of uh, uh, like uh, companies as, uh, as Amazon they they use like uh, okay. something like a uh, really cheesy like ta 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 uh, the other mantra is uh, this uh, hoodening song, like uh, Old Poor Horse, which is like uh, this melody on the minor, which is... So, uh, something which is a bit more folky. So we are mixing these two things, two elements. And then through thinking with humor, uh, you can really find the ways of uh, maybe expressing further, because mm -hmm. uh, we have this uh, this section with his the, the pain area. So basically, and the memories and then uh, these masquerades uh, all across Europe, there's uh, this uh, topic of the exaggeration of something and this fight between uh, evil and good. So mm -hmm. we just uh, really say like maybe this uh, worker is just uh, just loses an arm in the uh, by work uh, during the, his work routines, just uh, picking and packing, and then yeah. like uh, like the manager just uh, goes there and just. Uh, Basically, because they have like these rates of efficiency to meet, they're like, oh, you can still work with uh, one arm, just uh, forget about the other thing. And then, uh, how can we depict that uh, with the cheesy music? So, uh, so we just uh, use the, I just decided just to use this, like a Samoni, like, we just embrace that cheesiness, but they just work with it and just they completely give it a different meaning. And I don't know, it's like, a, it's I think yeah you can have you can have like the the highest art forms or the most complex of ideas and narratives but using humor to um to um to, to enable access and, and to convey a, a message and of course music music is a, a, a hugely universal language so humor as well and it's been prevalent in opera and classical music for from the from the the get go, hasn't it? Um, that's fascinating. When when's that play due to be completed? Well, actually, we wanted to perform it live uh, as a street play, uh, playing yeah. in certain uh, locations of Birmingham, uh, yeah. and Coventry. But uh, of course, uh, it's not going to be possible now. Uh, the idea right now is just to do a, a video of it uh, for now and then oh. later perform it because there's so many dates that are related to memories and uh, and masquerades like for example the 12 magical days day of Christmas uh, mm -hmm. so uh, those were days in which uh, masquerades uh, they just appear every, everywhere in, in Europe in Poland in Germany in the Alps as well in in Spain there's uh, many masquerades as well also yeah. in Portugal and also uh, that also relates to the Morris dances uh, that maybe I don't know if uh, some places they still keep the tradition of uh, doing them on they, those do, they do there's been a bit of um, there's been a bit of kind of push and pull in recent decades because of some of the the traditions and the makeup and the um, the costumes and and uh, lyricism and and all of those things, you know, there's two I think two schools of thought. One one in that it's rooted in colonialism and slavery and mm. um, subjugation of of other nationalities and ethnicities, and then the others who say, well, it's rooted in English folklore and and mm. it's about storytelling and and you know the the roots of a lot of what they're talking about actually are quite um, genuine, authentic, and and uh, I suppose um, non-prejudiced. So it's an interesting it's an interesting discussion actually around that. And I know 
you know, there's there's a bigger question around uh, cultural identity and, and folk music in lots of different countries, not just European. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you really you really buzz and you benefit from working with you know in a kind of interdisciplinary mm. fashion. I mean, when I was um, preparing for the passing the baton interview and, and I read your um, biography on your website and, and the things that you've achieved and the project you've, you've worked on and the, the work you've created, it's, it seems like a, a phenomenal body of work that you, you've got behind you already, mm. um, but also that you've worked across lots of different disciplines with, with um, quite varied companies. Is that something you seek out? Is that is that does that keep you going? Well, actually, it's something that they, I try not to force things. I just try to grow naturally and just uh, try to develop a, an organic career. So basically, I mean, if I'm here right now, it's just uh, because I felt uh, that the people here were trusting in me and they, they were giving me opportunities. So uh, mm -hmm. there were many moments in which uh, I thought like, oh, maybe after this year, I'm going to come back to Spain. And then I got a fantastic opportunity to say, oh, maybe they want me here. So I'm just going to uh, stay here. So Birmingham, is, Birmingham is richer for you staying here. I'm very, I'm mm. very so, glad that you're here and part of the part of the ecosystem, you know, the, the music and creative ecosystem. Actually, that's a, that's a good point is that we talked a little bit in your, you gave a great answer about Birmingham and, and your experience and your early days here and how you see it now. Um, if, I've, if I've got this right, you said Birmingham is the city that you learn to love. Yes. Uh, I don't know how actually uh, people feel about it, but uh, especially when I talk about foreigners that uh, came to Birmingham, actually that kind of resonates with, uh, with them. Uh, I was uh, the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, recording uh, in uh, some just uh, like lines, uh, Jesse lines in a, for an album in uh, what's it Coventry? No, in Leamington. And uh, I was just uh, going by car with uh, with the people I was working uh, in that project. And um, uh, they were in Birmingham a couple of times. And some of them they were living here for a bit, and they were discussing about that because they were interested about uh, where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually resonated as well with uh, with those words. Like uh, I have uh, said that before. Uh, mm. I think it's because you know the city markets itself to tourists and new residents as one particular thing. But when you arrive in the city and you live, you study, you work here, you may experience a slightly different, for better or for worse, you know, there's a bit of a disparity in, in, as, in as much as if you, if you have a view of London that it's a particular type of city, but actually the reality may be, may be a little different. And also this, you must have come across this um, belief that Birmingham UK that have strong regional identities mm. tend to get heard because they shout louder. Yeah. Um, tell me, tell me what you, some of your particular highlights or, or favourite reasons or, or parts of Birmingham's music community. I mean, you must have, you must have seen and been part of some incredible performances. Are there, are there people doing good things that you want to give a shout out to, for example? Well, uh, I really enjoy the the community the artistic community in Digbeth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the, one of the strongest features and then now it's also a bit of a, a challenge because uh, there's a, this uh, like a shadow of a gentrification over a uh, of very over Digbeth uh, also with uh, the I new I fear station. it's more than a shadow I, I fear I fear it's more than a shadow but yes um, it is. yeah that's that's mm. a good way to describe it Mm. Yes, no, actually, that's uh, why we partnered uh, uh, with uh, with Big Brew, uh, not just uh, for uh, for the sake of doing uh, projects in a, in a brewery, which is uh, really cool, but uh, for them, it's also very interesting just uh, to also not be just a brewery, so be some, uh, somewhere else. And uh, also, they really uh, know or learn that the, the collaboration is, uh, is key in these moments, especially when uh, there's things that they you don't really know what uh, you're going to be facing uh, in the next uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years, and uh, especially not knowing who's going to be owning the, the space, uh, what's going to happen. So uh, it would be a pity to to lose the dig better cities because uh, there's many concerts of uh, like uh, uh, many central and yeah, central, uh, all the all the folk music concerts, all the uh, experimental music as well. Yeah. So that's a really 
great scene that uh, we have also quite close to the conservatoire. I guess uh, that's one of the best things uh, of the new conservatoire yeah. that uh, we are quite close to that really big hub of uh, artistry in the in the in the city. I think there's definitely um, amidst all the difficulty and the doom and the gloom that's that's occurred, um, you know, since the pandemic, is that and, and Birmingham sometimes was quite fragmented and. Um, divided in in terms of its music community you did get lots of people that collaborate um but then there are also people geographically artistically socially that w would never work together for, for lots of for lots of reasons but i think it's a bit of a cliche now but the the pandemic has has been a great leveler in that everybody is all pretty much on the on the same um yeah. on the same uh, footing my dog's just barking because my housemate's coming um, yeah, I'm just going to close the door one second. Um, so, so a, a new spirit of collaboration and, and um, togetherness has, has definitely emerged. Um, and that's a really great thing. I hope that it continues when, when things settle back. Yeah, I guess maybe one of the challenges I'm about thinking, that... Um, oh, sorry, I think there was a little lag. No, no, so... go, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to, to talk about that because uh, now uh, with the online connections, it's maybe easier just uh, to trigger these uh, collaborations, especially now that uh, everything, as you say, has leveled. But I guess mm -hmm. maybe the, the previous issue is uh, what you were see, uh, saying about the city being a bit fragmented. And I think maybe that's uh, related uh, to how uh, transport uh, works in the in the city, which is quite tricky just uh, to reach from uh, one part of the city to, to another. The idea of placemaking, that when you, when you create a place, whether yeah. it's this new vision of Digbeth, whether it's public spaces in the city centre, whether it's on campus, you know, outside the conservatory or inside, there has to be so many uh, uh, consideration of so many factors. You know, mm. the people that live and work there, the people that pass through, the the, the complementary nature of the buildings, the, the purpose, the green sustainability, and I think um, Birmingham, since since it was encircled by um, lots of roads in the 1950s and 60s and then the subsequent removal of those roads is still struggling to find its its connections from quarter to quarter or, or area to area. I mean look at the jewellery quarter for example the, the the difficulty from getting from the jewellery quarter to Digbeth without having to traverse major roads go through the city centre etc so there's still a lot of work that can be done but I, I'd like to I'd like to just end that particular um, uh, thing on a, on a that particular conversation on a positive note. That I think wherever, regardless of the spectra or shadow of gentrification, of course HS2 is is making um, significant changes to Digbeth. Those people that create and those spaces that are there, I like to I like to think that that will will happen somewhere else in the city, and I've no doubt, Danny, that you are going to be a really important part of that community I going forward. It. I think you're you're clearly contributing a lot to the city, and and you know you're probably part of the glue that that holds those interdisciplinary um, artists together. So I guess there's a thank you in there in there, and don't go anywhere soon. <laughs> Well, I mean, if that's possible, it's, uh, it's, uh, I need now to thank all the people that they actually may, uh, made it possible. Because, uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the trust and the support and the help and then uh, also the will of doing things uh, from all the people I met uh, uh, all these years uh, I've been here. If it wasn't uh, for uh, these people, uh, I wouldn't be here probably. So they just uh, really gave me the, the reason uh, to, to stay and keep creating and doing things for... Uh, for the community and so that's great that's great to hear well you know despite all the challenges we are we are one musical community here in, in Birmingham and, and the stronger we are the, the the more of an exciting future we have Danny we're going to wrap it up there if that's okay with you um, I really really enjoyed talking to you I think you're an incredibly creative talent and you've got um, lots more incredible work in you I'm sure um, we're very, very lucky to have you at, at the conservatory and at the university, and, and I look forward to hearing and discovering work. And you know, maybe one day in the in the future, in in the near future, we can we can go and catch some live music together and and hang out in real life.
yes, maybe we can uh, hang out in uh, Damascus you now. As we were saying <laughs> at the time that they, it wasn't recorded, <laughs> that both of us, oh, we're coming back again to that <laughs> advertisement. Oh. Oh, advert. Yes, they're, paying, okay. they're paying you, aren't they? They're paying you. <laughs> yeah, I wish that I actually asked them. Okay, we'll, we'll meet for a mint tea and a, a Turkish coffee soon. Danny, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking yeah, part in, in this and passing the baton. And keep in touch and, and we'll yes. speak again soon. Yes, good. Look Thank after you yourself. Much. Have a good week. Yes, you too. See um, you soon. See you Bye. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.